the attributes you have on your geometry in SOPS affect some things that happen inside LOPS importing. I have a couple little networks set up here, and what we'll do is we'll go through them one by one and take a look at how it affects the scene graph and what we can do to manipulate the scene graph just by adding properties onto our SOP stuff. So let's quickly take a look at the name and path attribute one here. And it's currently empty. All it is is a box sphere and torus with normals, and we're merging and going into our output. So if we go to our stage and we make a SOP import here, let's point it to that network. So the name and path attributes, let's just accept that. Now, when it comes in here, what we're going to see is that it is all one object here. It all comes in as mesh zero. Even though these are individual objects, we don't get a separate piece saying that that's the box and that's the sphere and that's the torus. So how can we handle that? How can we make them separate things so that we can target them with individual materials, for instance, or individual transforms? Well, if we dive back to our name and path attribute here, we'll go ahead and lock that. What we want to do here is add a name attribute. So if I put a name here and keep that as primitive, we'll name that box. What we see here is that box came in with its own name and mesh zero was denoted for everything that did not have the name attribute. So let's go ahead and name everything else. I'm going to name this sphere. And we'll name this torus. Now let's jump over to our stage. And what we see is we have the torus, sphere, and box and they've come in correctly named, and we have our controls so we can see that each of them is actually doing what they're supposed to be doing. Now, the path that they get put under here is coming here from the import path prefix, and that is set to the operator string name, which is our SOP import. So we can change this if we want. So we can just call this something like my asset slash geo. Now we have something, my asset, geo, and we have box, sphere, and torus coming in. Now let's take a look at the path attribute here. So what I'm going to do is on the box, we'll put down a little wrangle here. And I'm going to change this from points to primitives. And what I want to do is I'm going to make an attribute called path. It's a string attribute, so we'll start with s at path and then equals. So a quote. And now I'm going to call this my path test slash geo slash. And then we'll add the name attribute there plus s at name. And now what we see here is we've inherited this path. So that box is gone. It no longer sits in the geo here. Now it's in my path test. We open that up slash geo slash box. Now, one thing you'll notice is that even though we had defined a place for this to go, and we'll pop back over to our stage here, we had to find in here an import path prefix this ignored that because it had the path attribute set. So if you have a path attribute set, it's going to override what's happening here in the import path prefix. So something to know about. Um, I tend, when I'm doing stuff going back and forth between stops, I tend not to define the path attribute because I like the flexibility of being able to define that here. But you can always overwrite that stuff if you need to and repath uh, if you absolutely had to uh, from SOPs. So that's a good walkthrough of that very first um, example there. Let's go ahead and take a look at example number two.
For this example, we're going to use our name and path attributes network there. If we dive inside, uh, I've already put name attributes on here. If yours doesn't look like mine, go ahead and match that up. Make sure they're primitive attributes. And I'm going to add a new attribute here. I'm going to put this under the box. And we will call this subset. We can call it anything we choose. I'm doing this for clarity here. This needs to be a primitive attribute, and it needs to be an integer. I'm going to give it a value of 1 and a default of 0. What this means is that when I group select here, anything that I choose that's part of the group is going to get a value of 1. Anything that didn't get chosen will have a default of 0. So we have two different values on the object. We'll copy paste that. And for the sphere, I'm going to choose top part. Copy paste that for the torus. And there we go. We see that it uh, inherited the uh, similar indexing here based on them having the same number of primitives. So I'm good with that. We've got two random ones, the top part and then the bottom part of the torus. OK, let's go over to our stage here. Now, nothing changed much here. But let's go over to our import data, scroll down. And here we can find partition attributes. If I enable this, I can get a list of attributes we can use to break these pieces of geo apart. It has to be either an integer attribute or a string attribute. I'm going to choose our subset attribute here. And now you'll see we get these subsets. Now keep in mind, geometry subsets can't be transformed. There's not much you can do with them. Disabling them doesn't seem to do anything here. They're really meant just for material assignments. So let's go ahead and prove that this is actually working. We'll make a material library. And for the sake of speed, I'm just going to use a USD preview surface here. We'll call this blue. Color it blue, of course. Make one called red, which we'll color red. And go back to our stage. Now, we can assign this with an assign material lop, or we can do a nice little trick here where we just drag and drop right in the scene graph tree here. You can drag and drop in the viewport. However, it doesn't give you access to the subsets here, at least not yet. Maybe in a future RFE, it will get done. So we'll assign red to subset 0 and blue to subset 1, which were the chosen subsets in our uh, object network or SOP network. So here we go, blue, blue, and blue, red, red, and red. And you can see once we did those drag and drops, it gave us an assigned material lop automatically, matched everything up correctly, and was very easy for us to do our material assignments this way. I wanted to take a look at visibility attributes here. So let's dive inside. And I have a network very similar to what we saw before. Uh, I do have the name attributes already assigned in this one. And we'll go ahead to our stage, do a SOP import, and we'll bring those in. So we'll go and find our visibility attributes. Now, it might be a little strange that I'm calling this visibility attributes because I haven't actually done anything with visibility yet, but we will. Uh, the way that you control visibility in lops here is with attributes, and there's a prune lop that sets these for you. Now, if we're looking at our box, for example, I'm going to drag this in here so we can see. For a primitive pattern, I'll drag box in. And what happened is it made it invisible because the prune method says make invisible. You can see that right here that it has become invisible. If I go up a level, you'll see the eye is on, it is visible.
down here, invisible. You can also deactivate the object as well, which is what that does. There's a difference between visibility and deactivation. I'm not going to get into the finer points of that just yet. Let's just know that for now, what we want to do is just look at visibility and deactivation uh, follows a very similar principle. So if I go to box here and I kind of look around here, what we should see is that we have a USD attribute here called visibility. And we can see that this gets set to invisible. If I select the sphere here and we look at it, the visibility is set to inherited instead. So we can use attributes to control what's happening here uh, inside LOPS. And let's go ahead and replicate what we've just seen. So I'm going to remove that completely. We'll go back to object level, go to our visibility attributes and on box. We'll make an attribute wrangle. I will set this to primitives here. And this is a string attribute. Set that to invisible. Now, nothing happened yet because we haven't actually brought that in, that attribute. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on in our stage here. So what we've seen is that when we select the box, visibility still says inherited. However, we scroll up a little bit and we see that there's a prim variable that says visibility, and that's being set to invisible. So what we need to do is tell LOPS that this attribute is actually a USD attribute, not just a prim variable. If we go back into our import data here, we can say that there are USD attributes coming in. I can click that and I can change this to visibility. And now what we'll see is visibility sets itself to invisible. Now, the problem is we brought all of these objects in together in this one SOP import. And so Sphere and Taurus didn't have anything set. So they disappear because Lops doesn't know what to do with them. So if we go back into our object context here and we change this to inherited, copy paste that, and then go back into our stage. What we see here is correct now. The sphere is set to inherited, torus is set to inherited, and our box is set to invisible.